Thank you, Professor Ho Ping. Ke Wei Lai Ping, Da Jia Hao. President Wong, faculty members and students. Of course, it is a rare honor to be here at Peking University, a beacon of uh, China's intellectual life. From the cusp of the 20th century to the present, this institution has nurtured generations of leaders and visionaries, poets and dreamers, builders and innovators, people who have contributed to China's remarkable journey and inspired new possibilities for the future. It was here that the members of the May 4th movement were ignited, sparking a nationwide call for renewal and independence. Within these walls, the foundations of a confident rising China were laid, leaving an enduring legacy to the vast nation. And it is from this very place that I believe President Xi Jinping's vision of a strong, democratic, civilized, harmonious and modern socialist country by 2049 will ultimately be realized. As the Song Dynasty poet Lo Yu wrote, This is a difficult part. <laughs> Shan Chong Xu Fu Yi Wu Lu Liu A Hua Ming Yu Yi Chun. <laughs> After mountains and rivers, that seemed to have no end. There is a bright village amid the shade of willows and flowers. In, closing, in choosing to establish relations with China, we moved past the seemingly unending mountains and rivers of ideological obstacles. We made a conscious choice to step beyond past the prejudices and uncertainties. What we found, on the other hand, was a place of shared purpose and partnership. Since then, our relations has deepened and matured. We, uh, President Gong made that reference clearly. Reaching a milestone in 2023 with the establishment of the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The spans of political, economic, cultural and defense lies and embodies the trust and shared vision that binds our two nations. The partnership is further strengthened by the alignment between China's Belt and Road Initiative and Malaysia's Madani Economic Framework. The shared vision highlights our commitment to inclusive and sustainable development. The Madani framework is rooted in the welfare and dignity of our people, prioritizing social justice, economic resilience, and sustainability. In governance, Malaysia and China are decidedly on common ground. Both our nations are united in the conviction that good governance is both a moral imperative and the foundation of prosperity. We stand together in our commitment to combat corruption and to ensure that the benefits of growth reach everyone, not just a select few. The economic partnership between Malaysia and China has flourished over the decades. Since 2009, China has been Malaysia's largest trading partner. And in 2023 alone, trade between our countries accounted for over 17% of Malaysia's total trade. Our partnership extends far beyond traditional industries, encompassing sectors with high potential for innovation and growth. Malaysia and China 
are working closely to enhance collaboration in the digital economy, green energy, artificial intelligence, and the semiconductor industry. In education, alluded to both scholars, we see the fruits of collaboration between Chinese and Malaysian universities. While pursuing academic excellence, this collaboration will further enhance cross-cultural exchanges and appreciation of cultural bonds and lies to enrich the bond of friendship and trust. So, President, I would certainly support the idea of extending this collaboration between Peking University, a spectacular example of a leading university of research and science and culture with our university. Now, as Malaysia prepares to assume the role of ASEAN Chair in 2025, we are keenly aware of the responsibility that entails. ASEAN has evolved into a region of 671 million people with a combined GDP of $3.8 trillion, making it the fifth largest economy in the world. The complexities of our, our global landscape requires ASEAN to take on new roles and responsibilities. In 2005, our chairmanship theme of inclusivity and sustainability reflects a vision of ASEAN where all members, regardless of size or economic capacity, benefit from growth and development. To achieve this, Malaysia will champion the principles of ASEAN centrality. This is a concept that places ASEAN at the heart of regional peace, security, and economic cooperation. Our region should interact constructively with global powers while maintaining our independence and promoting regional stability. That's why we have asserted in no uncertain terms that we will not tolerate any unilateral decision that dictate other nations. And this is precisely, again, the reason why we will continue to engage with China as our friend and our trusted ally. Above all, ASEAN centrality can only be maintained is if Southeast Asia is united and cohesive. Malaysia recognizes this. And as chair, we will work tirelessly to strengthen ASEAN's cohesion, ensuring that all voices are heard and respect that collective decision-making process. ASEAN-China relations also reflect our shared commitment to innovation and emerging technologies no doubt, and in many ways, unprecedented, miraculous, in terms of the strikes that China have achieved in digital transformation, AI, green energy. But more profoundly is the leadership's passion for equitable distribution to champion the rights of every single Chinese and to cater for the welfare of the very poor and the marginalized. And this certainly will be duly uh, explained or reflected in my uh, meeting tonight with President Xi Jinping to what remarkable progress which must be recognized. Yes, there is huge digital transformation and uh, phenomenal success and progress economically. But it's always that passion for the right of every single citizen. And that, again, that uh, the phenomenal success in tackling the root problems of poverty, in particular, abject poverty. Now, in 2025, Malaysia will initiate a trilateral forum involving ASEAN, the Gulf Cooperation Council, 
seven Arab countries, and China, which will introduce a unique dimension of ASEAN-China relations. By linking ASEAN, China, and the GCC, we can bridge, we can build a bridge between East Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East, enabling deeper economic, cultural, and strategic ties among our regions, which will contribute to creating a shared vision for cooperation. Now, as we look towards strengthening ASEAN-China relations, it is essential that we draw inspiration from the principles that guide our cooperation. On this call, I would like to note that I am deeply moved by President Xi Jinping's steadfast commitment to fairness and justice. I made reference in my speech in Shanghai about um, President Xi Jinping's speech at Kazan BRICS Forum is unique in the sense, and particularly for the young, to understand the leaders not only talk about global security, global development, justice, good governance, but talking about shared future, about having the capacity and the resolve to understand the need to uplift living standards of people throughout the world. And coupling with the central issue of civilization and culture, you name me, which other leader articulates the vision for the future while trying to understand civilization, values and culture. That is why I feel certainly comfortable in exchanges with the President for his foresight and vision. I remember his address marking the 70th, 70th anniversary of the five principles of peaceful coexistence, President Xi Jinping emphasized that China advocates the vision of global governance featuring extensive consultation and joint contribution for shared benefit, and China believes in true multilateralism. Now, this consistent articulation of shared value underscores the imperative for a global security and prosperity. And this is contrary to what we have been told and, and seen, the rapaciousness, the endemic uh, corruption, and the arrogance of power, the talk about unilateralism and um, gross injustice, perpetrated against people, and the worst, of course, if you see daily in Gaza. This vision is what the world needs. The deficit is, of course, the deficit of humanity, of values, of respect for culture and civilization. So this articulation, to me, is most opportune considering that there is so much trust deficit, racism, phobias, protectionism, unilateralism confronting our world today. As for shared prosperity, no one can deny that China has the moral high ground to advocate, to advocate the principle of shared future on account that is its remarkable achievement in eradicating extreme poverty. In Malaysia, addressing socioeconomic inequality has been our top priority. And these achievements are attained on a platform dedicated to the pursuit of global peace and harmony with repeated emphasis on crucial importance of a society rich in culture and ethnic diversity. 
Now we need therefore to work together to build a deeper, more mature partnership, one that celebrates achievements and values, open, constructive dialogue. Real progress happens when we move beyond words to actions that foster trust and address shared challenges. Allow me to end by reiterating that there here are profound lessons that we can learn from China's experience in economic development, geo geopolitics, and international diplomacy. China's balanced approach to geopolitics and its advocacy for multilateralism highlights the value of stability, cooperation, and respect for sovereignty. President Xi's persistent call for extensive, extensive consultation and a joint contribution for shared benefit embodies a vision of global governance rooted in fairness and collective progress. We and other global partners can therefore work together toward a world where prosperity, security and peace are achieved not through dominance but through genuine partnership and respect.